Hello students and welcome to our elevator trim stalls demonstration video. Before we jump into the cockpit, let's quickly discuss the objective of this maneuver and some key factors that we'll be focusing on. The elevator trim stall demonstration shows what can happen when the pilot applies full power for a go around without maintaining positive control of the airplane. Now this is a demonstration only maneuver. In this maneuver execution video, we will not be covering detailed aerodynamics, maneuver diagrams, common student errors, or the ACS standards. This video is to simply explain and demonstrate the execution of the maneuver and will vary based on the aircraft you are flying. To see all of the additional details we just mentioned and to study this lesson's full length presentation, podcast diagrams, flashcards, lesson quiz, and more, look up the elevator trim stalls lesson on our website at Wi-Fi CFI. Dot com. Lastly, before we jump into the cockpit, there are a couple key factors that we need to cover regarding this maneuver. First, we are going to begin our flight in the practice area at a safe altitude to execute and recover from the stall. We're going to be at about uh, 2500 feet AGL here. We will also begin with the airplane in a normal cruising configuration and cruising airspeed. We'll go ahead and complete our clearing turns to look for other traffic in the area. This demonstration is typically completed in the landing configuration as we are demonstrating what may happen during a go-round procedure when positive control of the airplane is not maintained. Hence, we will begin to slow our airplane and configure as if we were going to complete a power-off stall. Now, if you don't know what a power-off stall is or if you have not seen our power-off stall execution video on Wi-Fi CFI, we highly suggest going to watch that video prior to coming back to this one because it'll help kind of tie everything together. In our power off stall or landing configuration, we will be in a stabilized descent about 65 to 70 knots. Just as if we were coming in, we're pretending that we're coming in on final approach to land. So stabilized descent, final approach to land, we're all set up for our landing, descending at 65 to 70 knots. Then, once we're all set up, we'll go ahead and simulate a go round procedure by taking our throttle, increasing our power to full. When we do this, the nose of the airplane is going to climb because we just got a whole bunch of power. We are going to allow the nose of the airplane to climb because this would simulate what would happen if the pilot did not maintain positive control of the airplane by holding the nose down a little bit during the go around. So we're going to add that power, nose is going to start to climb. The pitch attitude should continue to climb until the airplane starts to induce stall indications. So at the first indication of the stall, we will reduce our angle of attack, we'll add full power, it already should be full because remember we're practicing the go round, but if it's not, double check it, make sure it is full. We'll be lowering the nose, then we'll build our airspeed, we'll reduce our flaps and landing gear just as we do when we're recovering from a power off stall. We'll climb away from the simulated runway and the simulated obstacles. So we'll cover the rest of the airplane, show you how this all works, let's head out there and do an elevator trim stall. All right, students, welcome out to the airplane. Today we're going to go ahead and do elevator trim software. Before we do that, we just want to show you how we are all set up here in the practice area to complete this stall safely. Hop in the cockpit here. You can see that we're at 2,500 feet AGL as we're in the cockpit. I'm going to do a left 180 for our clearing turn to clear the area for traffic. As we're doing this, I'm actually going to bring my throttle back just a little bit as well to start slowing down as we're going to be getting into a power off stall configuration. Pretending like we're coming in to land and then we're going to be channed like we are doing a go round without maintaining positive control of the airplane. We're outside here looking for traffic. Don't see any other traffic in the area. Hop back in our cockpit, and I'm going to go ahead and kick off the autopilot. We'll get set up for a nice stabilized descent as if we are coming in on our final approach to land. Kick off our autopilot. Whenever I do that, I have to retrim the airplane usually, so bear with me for a sec. Great. I'm going to bring the power back even a little bit more, maybe 1700 or so. We're going to add our first notch of flaps. Our 
second notch. We're going to go ahead and do full flaps on this one here. Trimming out the airplane to get a nice, like I said before, a nice stabilized descent at between 65 and 70 knots. So this is basically how we'd be right here as if we were coming in for landing. Now we're going to simulate that we do a go around. We don't maintain positive control of the airplane. So as we give it that full power, you're going to see the nose is going to kick up. We're just going to let the nose kick up until we get that stall indication, at which point we'll do a power off stall recovery technique. We'll fly it along, and we're going to say, oh crap, we got to do a go around. We're going to give it full power. You're going to notice with our trim and our flaps that the nose of the airplane is kicking up pretty sharp. Now the flight simulator has a lot of performance, more performance than the actual airplane, so I'm adding some back pressure on the yoke in your plane you probably won't even have to. Not even, there's the horn, so we're going to nose over. We've already got our full power in, so we're going to let our airspeed start to build. Controlling our altitude here as our airspeed's building, we'll go ahead and retract our flaps. So we can climb out from our, climb up and away from our simulated runway and our simulated obstacles. Flaps are all the way cleaned up now, and then we would just climb up to the new altitude designated by the flight instructor for our check ride examiner. And we'll just go back to that 3,500 feet that we were already at. That's it, pretty simple. We're just simulating a go around, we're getting the airplane set up for landing, simulating the go around, not maintaining positive control of the airplane. You can see that the nose kicks up. Again, in the flight simulator, I had to add some back pressure on the yoke to actually get the stall indication. In your airplane, it'll probably kick up pretty well, slow down, you get that indication, and then do your normal power off stall. Recovery. So that's it for our elevator trim stalls, guys. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you on the next one coming up soon.